Hello everyone, welcome to the Saturday edition. In this video, I'm going to be talking about two very significant updates related to the state of New South Wales and the state of South Australia. So let's get started with South Australia first. The state of South Australia has opened up its migration program for the year 2023-24. And the occupation list has also been released. The much awaited occupation list has been kind of a disappointment for many because South Australia was traditionally always considered to be a state that accommodated the largest number of occupation or let's say very had a very expansive list. So yes, it was a little disappointing for a lot of professionals who were not listed on South Australia's list. Um, now I'd like to tell you here, if you look at South Australia's occupation list, it will have just about all the occupations that are there on the MLT SSL, the STSOL or ROL. It will also specify the criteria for each occupation. For example, uh, if you talk about, let's say, a mixed crop farmer, it'll state that, you know, uh, the minimum requirement would be 65 points and uh, the uh, minimum English proficiency score required would be a competent level English. However, beneath the criteria, it would state that this occupation is not eligible for offshore applications. Now, uh, let me tell you this, that the way I look at it, and this is entirely my personal view, if South Australia intended to shut down these occupations for this program year, that is to not take up these occupations at any point of time, it could have very well just put up a list uh, of occupations which are currently available and could have completely obliterated, uh, removed the occupations which are currently not eligible for offshore uh, nominations. So the way I look at it is that it has laid out its criteria for all the occupations and I do have reason to believe that that is done with the purpose that at some point of time, the occupations which are listed on South Australia but go with the caveat that the occupation is currently not eligible for offshore applications will be made eligible for offshore applicants in times to come. So this is something you need to look into their website. Now, an important thing I'd like you to note is that uh, while a lot of significant occupations have been removed from, uh, or let's say, I wouldn't say removed, they've not been removed at all. Uh, significant occupations are currently not available for offshore nominations. A very interesting occupation is listed there that is private tutors and teachers not elsewhere classified. Now why such important occupations where there's a huge shortage in Australia such as marketing specialists or let's say um, complementary health therapists and so many other occupations are currently not available for offshore migration. Why has private tutors been retained, especially uh, considering the fact that in the year 22-23, there was just a handful of invitations for private tutors. Now, I'd like to tell you that uh, I have tried to raise this concern um, at different forums. I also spoke about this to the Wireless team in our New Delhi meet uh, with the migration agents recently. And I did take up this concern that private tutors and teachers is an occupation that has not received its fair share of nominations. So probably even DHA realizes that, which is why they decided to retain this occupation. And this occupation is available for nominations uh, as, as far as the offshore applicants go. So that is huge good news for those who've nominated this occupation. Now, a quick answer to a very common question. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of, um, um, I would say, persons who are posting on social media are at, uh, writing at that now South Australia uh, needs 
an ROI, a registration of interest. Now, though South Australia does state that it has now moved to the ROI system, however, the ROIs need to be lodged only by onshore in-state applicants and not for overseas or offshore applicants. So let me just put it another way. The answer to the question whether those who have lodged an expression of interest for South Australia within the skill select system, whether they need to, in addition to the EOI, whether they need to also lodge an ROI with South Australia. The answer is no. If you are an offshore applicant seeking a nomination from South Australia, you do not need to lodge any ROI because the ROI requirement is only for in-state applicants. So I hope that is sorted. Now let's move on to NSW. Now the state of NSW has made some very, very dramatic changes. Um, for the year 22-23, the NSW had very clearly published a list of occupations, basically unit groups and uh, and schools. So it was very easy for applicants to identify whether their occupation was listed on NSW's uh, occupation list or not. Now they have moved away from that and they're saying we're not publishing any ANSCO lists or any occupations. We are just telling you that our focus will remain on five major industries and those industries are health, education, ICT, that is information and communications, uh, infrastructure and agriculture. Now, uh, you might think that infrastructure, ag education, health, or let's say ICT and agriculture is very limited. Let me tell you, these are not limited, especially the, the industry infrastructure is a very, very broad industry. So when we talk about infrastructure, a lot of people think, oh, infrastructure is just related to construction and, you know, building roads and all. No infrastructure is a very broad uh, industry that includes hundreds and thousands of occupations so for those of you who think that probably they stand very little chance in getting an invitation from nsw because their occupation probably does not fit into one of these five industries you just may be surprised as to what all occupations are going to be invited by nsw now, um, um, one thing I would like to clarify is that uh, the NSW has made it very clear that when we are selecting the uh, um, applicants for invitation for a nomination, it doesn't really matter whether your EOI is old, has been updated recently or is a fresh one. Unlike Queensland, they are not going to prioritize new EOIs. So if you're somebody who's already lodged an EOI, indicating NSW as the preferred state, you're good to go. Uh, the state of NSW now will be conducting its first invitation, nomination invitation round next week, but that will be for subclass 190. So if you think you're somebody who uh, is able to score enough points for 190, to be, uh, for being eligible for 190, please go ahead and lodge an EUINR. You never know, you may get a selected next week. Now, another important thing is that as far as the 491 applicants are concerned, last year, many, I mean, thousands of applicants were nominated under the 491 uh, nomination system. And this year, the state of NSW does endeavor to take up the regional uh, nominations, that is the 491. As soon as they are done with the old applications, now we do know we have some of our applications stuck with the NSW where the applicants have pay, uh, paid their fee but they have not received a decision. So the NSW has made it very clear that let us first process the old NSW applications for 491 nominations. Once we are done with that, we will start with the 491 invitations. Now the big question remains. Will the direct applications be available this time? Now, this is something I'm a little confused about and not in a position to really answer that for now. We will have to just watch and see, wait and watch. 
So that will be it for now. For any queries, please feel free to write to us. We'll be happy to take your questions. Call us on 78498-78498 or email us on enquiries at canwings.com. That is E-N-Q-U-I-R-I-E-S at canwings. That is C-A-N-W-I-N-G-S dot com. Until next time, bye-bye and take care.